Thank you for joining us on your Saturday morning for the Immune Boosting Boot Camp. I am Dr. Bandana Chavla, board certified in internal medicine and lifestyle medicine. And this is? I'm Dr. Manish Chavla, and I'm board certified in diagnostic radiology and lifestyle medicine. We are so excited that you all are here this morning and wanting to learn tips and tricks on how to boost your immune system. So we will definitely cover that. Before we get started with the presentation, I just want to go over some uh, a few rules and just kind of give you an overview and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's going to be three presentations uh, each uh, this Saturday and two successive Saturdays after that. And then we'll have a Q&A after each one. And week one is going to focus on nutrition and we'll introduce exercise and stress management. Week two is going to focus on nutrition and stress management, but we'll focus a little bit more on exercise. The third week, you know, we'll cover all three, but on the third week, we'll focus more on stress management. All of you should have received uh, an email which contains pa a packet, which has recipes, grocery uh, lists, has resources for further reading and also references and just other tips and tricks that we could put on a graphic format. So all of you should have received that. If anyone didn't receive it, you can let us know now or you can just put it in the chat box and we'll make sure that you get that. Okay, also this is a reminder and also letting people know that all of the presentations will be recorded and if anyone is, you know, camera shy for whatever reason. So when we're presenting uh, that part, only the screen that, you know, you see, that's the only thing that's getting recorded. But when we do the Q&A, and if you are talking, then your face is going to come up on the screen and will be recorded. So if you want to turn off the camera or, if you, you know, just to let you know. I mean, we, of course, want you to be engaged. And um, but if you don't want your face on the screen, you can also put it in the chat box. Any questions? And I'll read the chat back question, chat box questions out loud and we can answer them. OK. And the other thing we just want to kind of quickly go through is the disclaimer that the immune boosting boot camp is for informational and educational purposes and should not be regarded as medical advice. Please consult your physician or other healthcare provider before, many, before making any changes to your diet and lifestyle. Participating in this boot camp does not create a doctor-patient relationship between any, uh, any person related to lifestyle docs and any other registrants. And I know a lot of you that are here already are patients. So, you know, that part doesn't apply to you. But if you're not currently a patient, then this does not, you know, make a doctor-patient relationship. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. If there's any questions, just kind of, I'm going to just kind of go back and forth to see if there's anything in the chat box. I think I can see it on here. But just to be safe. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat box, so we're gonna go ahead and get started if you all are ready. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? So our objectives for today are, you know, we're gonna talk about why are we so concerned about this coronavirus? You know, what do we know about it? Uh, how can we minimize our risk that we don't get this infection? And if we do get exposed to it, how can we make sure that we can fight it off and not have a serial, you know, serious illness. We'll talk specifically about, you know, how to accomplish that. And, you know, one way and very effective way is to boost our immune system. And then we'll come up with an actionable plan that you can start doing things today that will lower your chance of, you know, one, getting infected, and two, if you do get infected, that it's a mild illness, it's not something that, you know, progresses that you have to go into hospital for. And amazing thing is we have the power to do this. Our body is an amazing healing machine. We just need to give it the right fuel. So let's keep going. So one of the things I wanted to kind of start off uh, right off the bat is why are we so concerned about this virus? I mean, there are so many respiratory viruses, you know, there's the influenza virus that gives us the flu, 
you know, every year. Why are we more concerned about this virus than other viruses? Well, one of the reasons is this is much more contagious than the flu. And this is the reason that it's just spreading everywhere in every country and just, you know, it's like wildfire. A lot of people make the analogy that it's like, you know, it's like wildfire is just kind of finds sort of vulnerable people and just spreads really rapidly. The other thing to keep in mind, it does have a higher mortality rate. So typically a flu, I'm going to be comparing a lot of this virus to the influenza virus or the flu virus, because that's something we've been studying for decades. We know a lot about it. And it's a good way to kind of give you guys an idea. So typically in a flu season, the mortality rate is between 0.1 and 0.2. And you guys can all recall that are some uh, seasons or some winters, there's a lot more people that die from the flu than others. So it's just the strain is sometimes more virulent, but it's never been shown to be more than 0.2, which means not more than two in 1,000 people. Whereas this virus, and again, we're learning a lot about it, it's a new virus, but the best estimate at this time that its mortality rate is 0.4. So four times greater or two times greater if it's a bad flu season, uh, higher death rate with this virus than the flu virus. And the other thing is it's a novel virus, which means it's new. It's something we have not encountered before. So a lot of the you know, uh, research, a lot of the presentation, in fact, in our uh, talk, we're gonna be extrapolating from other respiratory viruses. But the part about our immune system and our body and healthy foods, all that we have you know, a lot of research on, but research specific to this virus is still limited, even though we've you know, been with it for over six months now. Another reason people are concerned is because don't have a vaccine. Uh, we do have a vaccine for the flu. We'll talk more about vaccines later in the presentation, but just to you know, acknowledge that at this time, not only do we not have a vaccine, we don't have any uh, particular medication, which is very effective, okay? And so all of these are good reasons to be concerned. All of these are good reasons to uh, take care of ourselves, to wear a mask in public, to practice social distancing. Those things are absolutely essential. But it's not the time, I, some people at least have the attitude that they just need to hunker down and not do anything else. They're just so overwhelmed by what's going on. But part of this presentation is to let you know that there's a lot you can do. And I just want to, you know, just make a brief comment that there is excessive media coverage. And I think that raises our stress levels. I mean, it's helpful to an extent, but when it's day in, day out, you turn on, you know, Facebook or social media or evening news, anywhere you look, you're just bombarded with information. And a lot of the stories in the news are showing young people dying from it. Whereas we'll learn in the presentation, and you may already know this, that for people who are relatively younger and healthy, this is a far different illness than someone who's older and debilitated. And so I like to use the example of heart disease. And the heart disease is the number one killer of all Americans has been for over a century. And most of the people who die from heart disease are in their 70s. But on occasion, you know, we have someone who's in their 30s, who's in their 40s, they look relatively fit on the outside and they pass away from heart disease. And this is something I learned from Dr. David Katz. He's a past president of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And he says, just imagine every time someone dies of heart disease in their 30s and 40s, it's all over social media. It's in the local news. It's in cable news. It's just everywhere. You sort of get the idea that this is a terrible disease. And yes, it is. But it kind of takes things out of perspective. 
So I want people to be concerned, but not be consumed by this virus. And as we'll show in this presentation, there's a lot we can do to make ourselves safer from it. And so I'm gonna quickly go over the current state of COVID-19. Uh, right now, as of this morning, there were over 3.6 million cases in the US that are confirmed. Texas was over 320,000. In the Houston area, there were over 53,000 uh, cases. So social distancing, wearing a mask is absolutely necessary. And it's one of the tools we have at our disposal to slow down the forest fire, to slow down the spread of this virus. So one of the reasons to do this, if a lot of people get sick at the same time, then this is gonna overwhelm the medical system. So just imagine if the hospital has equipment for 100 people and there's you know, enough ventilators to take care of 100 people, there's enough nursing, physicians, personal protective equipment, other things we need to take care of the patient that it's, you know, it can handle up to 100 people. Now, all of a sudden, if 150 people show up at the hospital, then we're not going to be able, the healthcare system can't take care of those 150 people adequately. So they're going to have to, you know, choose who gets the ventilator. They're not going to have enough resources, even enough nursing and physicians to take care of them adequately. So you can just imagine that's gonna to lead to a worse outcome if only 80 people came to the hospital and everything was adequate staffing, adequate equipment, and things you know, will flow much better. So it's still uncertain whether you know, reducing the, or the thing you may have heard is flattening the curve, that we don't want it to keep rising, we want it to. There's, we're still not sure whether you know, uh, flattening the curve or prolonging the, slowing down the number of people that get infected over time, whether overall that's gonna reduce the number of cases, but that's not really the point. We know we're gonna have better outcomes if we don't overwhelm the medical system. So one of the things I wanna call attention to, and I'll pose this question to you and to Dr. B is, is social distancing we know is compulsory, it helps, but is it enough? So I would argue that social distancing is important, um, but it's not enough. The reason it's important is like Dr. M said, we wanna slow down the number of cases. That gives us time. Um, so there's a lot of data that shows that doing all of this is not really gonna reduce the number of cases, it's just going to slow down the number of cases. And that is valuable because one, it gives us time in the hospitals, and two, it gives us time in terms of what the outcomes are. So Texas got coronavirus spike later, and our death outcomes have been so much better than New York and New Jersey because we've learned a lot more about the virus. We've learned a lot more about the treatment of the virus. Um, so slowing things down is beneficial in that aspect. And the other aspect of course, is if we can get the vaccine out, then slowing things down can also really improve things. But um, one thing that makes, makes me think that social distancing is not enough is actually a survey that was relieved by um, Andrew Cuomo of New York that showed that two thirds, 66% of patients that were hospitalized in New York in the month of May said that they had been staying home. They had not been going to work. They had not traveled. They were mostly staying at home. And yet data from China is showing that 16% of the family members of people infected with COVID-19 are getting the infection. So not all of them, which is what I've seen in my patient population as well. Many of my patients who get COVID-19, all the family members get checked and a lot of the family members don't get it. So there is more to this infection and us getting it and our outcomes than just preventing exposure, right? 
I passed by this elementary school not too long ago where the sign said, be safe, be strong. And it made me think that the media has done an excellent job telling us to be safe, but they really haven't taught us how to be strong. And that's kind of the reason we came up with this boot camp is because we wanted to focus on that second part on how we can be strong, how we can boost our immune system. Another reason um, to really work on our immune system is actually the vaccine, because we know that people who are healthier and younger have better outcomes with the vaccine. That means that vaccine is more effective in people who have stronger immune system. So this time that we have between the vaccine com coming out and now, we can use this time to make our immune system healthier. So when the vaccine does come out, it's more effective in us because a vaccine is not 100% effective as well. It takes up to 12 to 18 months of development and premature release can lead to harm. So it'll be 2021 at the earliest from what mm -hmm. we hear that the vaccine will come out. And you know, again, like Dr. M said, we would look back at influenza vaccine and stuff for guidance here. And on a year where there is a good match, influenza vaccine reduces the risk by 40 to 60%. If there's not a good match, then the effectiveness is even lower. And you guys hear about this. There are years where influenza vaccine is great and um, there are not as many cases in people who've had the vaccine, but yet there are years where even people who've had the vaccine get the flu um, very commonly. Before we move on, I do want to go over common symptoms associated with COVID-19. Fever is the most common one. About 90% of people with COVID-19 will get a fever, people who are symptomatic. About 70% will get a cough. Um, other ones are shortness of breath, you know, body aches, fatigue, malaise, the usual flu-like symptoms. And then this one also has been showing loss of taste or smell. And it's not subtle from what my patients have been telling me. One of them told me that he loves strawberries and when he was eating strawberries, he really couldn't even tell he was eating strawberries. Uh, another one said that she usually could not handle spicy Indian food, but while she had the coronavirus, it was the spiciness did not, she could not taste it at all. Um, other symptoms that I've been seeing in my patients have been nausea, dizziness, um, stomach symptoms. Um, yeah, so those are the, the main things to look out for um, with these symptoms. So I'd like to go over what the outcomes have been for people. And this data is coming mainly from China and Italy, but other countries are reporting similar data now. 80% of us will get a mild to moderate infection, that, which will not require hospitalization. It, it will just require us staying at home for 14 days, going through a bit of flu-like symptoms, drinking more fluids, taking care of ourselves, getting more rest, and then it's over. Yet 14% get hospitalized and 5% or so are needing ICU beds, um, the intensive care unit beds, and perhaps even ventilators. And these are the people that are high risk for mortality from this cancer. And I also wanna show you the data on mortality, which is deaths from coronavirus. And this is a graph coming out of Italy. And it's showing that 48.5%, almost half of the people who died in Italy from coronavirus had three or more illnesses. About a quarter had two illnesses and another quarter had one illness, and less than 1% had no illness. So again, like Dr. M was saying, we hear a lot about healthy young people even dying of coronavirus, but it is quite rare. So the more chronic illnesses we have, the higher our risk of um, getting affected adversely with coronavirus. So what can we do? Wear a mask. It tells people that you care about them. 
Um, the mask does more to protect others than it does to protect us, but it really does reduce the risk of your community getting higher cases of coronavirus. So when you go out with a mask, you let people know that you care about them and you care about their loved ones and you don't want them taking the virus to their old parents or other people around them who may be sick. Continue social distancing. That six feet rule is really important. Um, so mask actually does not take the place of social distancing. I've been seeing pictures of young teenagers on the beach all wearing a mask, but you know, hanging out very close to each other for prolonged periods of time. Um, being outdoors is way better than being indoors, but even outdoor exposure with someone for a prolonged period of time, especially over 15 minutes, um, increases the risk of transmission and then boost your immune system. And that's the part we really want to focus on over these three weeks with you guys. So first, let's talk about what weakens our immune system. There's several things. Um, one is age. As we get older, and also when we're very young, we seem to have worse immune system, not as strong. Chronic diseases. And what do we mean by chronic diseases? Chronic diseases would be things like high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, heart disease, um, diabetes. All of those are the big common chronic diseases in, in the Western world. Um, I said heart disease, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the reasons America is getting so hit hard, harder than other countries, is because we have more chronic diseases than other countries. So um, our population, because it's not as healthy, um, is having worse outcomes. Same thing with poor diet and lifestyle. Again, here, um, our American diet and lifestyle, the standard American diet, SAD, the SAD diet, actually worsens our immune system. Um, and then, of course, cancer. And many people are now on immunosuppressive medications for the uh, epidemic of autoimmune diseases that we've been seeing, which is things like lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, they're getting put on immunosuppressive medications that lower our immune system. So then how can we improve our immune system? Well, we can better manage our chronic diseases. By that, we mean, you know, making sure even if you have high blood pressure, trying to keep that blood pressure normal with medications, with diet. Uh, if you have diabetes, trying to keep your sugars normal, again, with medications and diet, um, and then improving our diet and lifestyle. And then lastly, maybe considering reversing those chronic diseases. And this is something that I would not have been able to say two years ago. Um, Re chronic diseases can't be reversed is what I was taught. Um, I've been doing internal medicine for 20 years and really was taught to offer just pills and procedures, um, which I did until I found out about the field of lifestyle medicine, which is an evidence-based field that um, came into being because CDC reported that over 80% of chronic diseases in the Western world are due to our diet and lifestyle. And hence, we can use diet and lifestyle to prevent, manage, and even reverse these diseases that are caused due to diet and lifestyle. So now, besides offering pills and procedures, I offer my patients lifestyle medicine as also a choice to manage and possibly reverse their diseases. And if there is somebody more passionate about lifestyle medicine than me, it's Dr. M. So I will hand it over to him now. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about lifestyle medicine, but I had it in my notes to one of the things I'm going to remind you when we get to the exercise part is that ever, you know, in our modern lifestyles, we have a lot of sedentary activity. We're sitting around watching TV, maybe even on social media, that it's good to move every 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So I think this would be a good break. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to practice what we preach. So we're going to get up and just kind of stretch our legs. And if you all want to do the same, you can, you know, bring your knees up. You can 
reach your hands over your head, whatever you know feels good to you right now. We just want to not just stay sitting for too long because that's one of the risk factors for increasing our disease burden. And so I'm gonna let everybody have a little break. I've kind of gotten my stretch in, so I'm gonna- yes. Stretch, squat, whatever it is you like to do, bend, reach, just even a few minutes of moving around. Our body really, really likes it. So I'm just gonna give everyone a chance to kind of settle back in and we will get started. So and this is also a good time. Uh, does anybody have any questions on what we've covered so far? So I know Michelle is keeping an eye on the uh, chat box if you guys wanna post there. And if you want to unmute yourself and have a question at this point, feel free to. Um, if you wanna wait till the end where we're gonna invite all questions, that's perfectly fine too. Okay, so I do see something in the chat box. Okay. okay, I think Michelle's taking care of it. All right, okay, back to the presentation. Okay, so what is lifestyle medicine? As Dr. B introduced, it's a new and exciting field which shows that you can not only prevent and manage diseases like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, asthma, even autoimmune diseases, you can actually use diet and lifestyle to reverse these diseases. And it's an evidence-based field, which means there's lots of peer-reviewed research which shows that if we act and you know, feed the body the right stuff, it can heal itself. That's one of the messages I wanna get across to everyone, that our body is wonderful at healing itself. All we need to do is provide the right physical fuel, emotional fuel, and this is the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, which tells us what do we need to do? So the first thing it says, we need to practice healthful eating. What does that mean? It means that we need to minimize our intake of processed foods and animal foods. Eat food as it comes out of the ground, whole plant foods. It means that we need to bring physical activity into our life. So that's the reason we did the stretch and just moved around for couple of minutes. Also, one of the things that's essential is we need to develop healthy ways to manage our stress. We need to form communities, have close relationships with ourselves and with others in our community. We need to get adequate sleep because not getting enough sleep can be very detrimental to our health and avoid risky substances, which is, you know, avoiding tobacco, limiting alcohol and other, you know, avoiding other illicit substances. And research shows that if we do these things, especially all of them, they work in synergy. They feed off of one other, that this is the right milieu to get your body, not just to be healthy, but actually be able to reverse diseases like heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, obesity. And so, with that introduction, we're gonna you know, come up with an actionable plan that all of you, we want you to kind of, you know, a lot of you are already Dr. B's patients and some are both of our patients and you already know some of this, but for those who may be a little bit new to this, we wanna get you started today. So what are we gonna focus on? We're gonna focus on improving our diet, uh, giving you healthy tools to manage stress, and we're gonna you know, add exercises if you haven't started or increase the exercise if you're already exercising and we'll give you practical tips on that. So what are the foods that support the immune system? So it's again, it's gonna be whole plant foods and the things that are really sort of stand out in terms of outcomes and boosting the immune system, I've kind of, put it all on one slide. So the bedrock of what our immune system needs is vegetables. These have zinc, these have vitamins, phytonutrients, and fiber. Fiber is something that's really important. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about 
more about that in just a second. And to almost as important are fruits. So all these things have wonderful phytonutrients. So phyto, meaning plant, nutrients, something that's essential for our body to be healthy. So these plant nutrients, they reduce our inflammation. They reduce the stress of oxidation. All of our food needs to be oxidized and metabolized. And all that waste that's generated when we process our food, this is taken care of by the phytonutrients. The other thing that stands out in research, which is you know, helpful in boosting our immune system, is fermented foods. So this is foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, even uh, raw organic apple cider vinegar. Uh, what other things can you think of? Uh, Non-dairy yogurt. So anything that has live bacteria. So that would be referred to as probiotics. And just as a side note, we want to get the probiotics, the healthy bacteria from food, not probiotic supplements. So what does this do for us? So our body is designed, you know, we evolved with these bacteria through millions of years. So we've outsourced some of the ways we handle food to these bacteria. And they produce wonderful compounds for us. And they also train our immune system. So bacteria, as we're growing, they train the immune system, letting it recognize what is foreign and what is harmful and what is healthy for the body. So if we don't have these healthy bacteria in our colon, it can really throw a monkey wrench into our immune system. It can overreact or it cannot react enough. So these are really important. And what do they, and you know, eating fermented foods is just part of getting a healthy bacterial population because what the food that these bacteria need is fiber. And that is what's so plentiful in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes. They have lots of fiber. So once you have the healthy bacteria, you want them to thrive. And the fuel they need is fiber. Remember, there's no fiber in animal products and very little fiber in processed foods. The other thing that stand out, uh, things that boost our immune system are mushroom and green tea. They actually have compounds which boost the natural killer cell activity. So these are white blood cells which are destroying viruses, bacteria, other harmful pathogens all the time. In fact, there's a study from a Japanese school, they randomized kids that half the, half the school, they did about two cups of green tea daily and the other half received no green tea. And they saw a significant difference on the kids who developed flu that season. So green tea and mushrooms are really good at boosting the natural killer cell activity. And same for spices. They boost their critical things that our immune system needs. And that's the other thing I want to point out, that we want to eat a variety of foods. We want to eat a variety of vegetables, fruits, spices, all have unique compounds which are healthy for us in general. And in particular, they really boost our immune system. Eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So what can we do to get started today? So one of the ways we want to get you started is uh, we sent everyone packets and one of the packets was recipes. For those of you who may be relatively new to this pattern of eating, there's five recipes that were sent out and also they include a grocery list and we'll send five more each of the other two weeks. So you'll have lots of recipes to try if you wanted to try all of them. One page is, has grocery list for the entire five recipes. So if you want to try one or try five, however it fits into your life, you know, that's available to you. Other things we have included are additional resources in terms of, you know, what is the best things to exercise, how much you should exercise. And we're going to focus a little bit more on exercise next time, but we've included that in the resources so you can get started today. Another thing I really want to mention that, you know, some people, especially if they're kind of getting started, they're not used to cooking so much, that 
you know, we have these healthy recipes and we're so fortunate. One of the Food for Life instructors, Carolina Mueller, she's going to do a free class. It's a complimentary class for anyone at attending today. And that link should also have been in your email, but if you don't have it, just please let us know. And that class is gonna be at one o'clock today. Just, she's gonna teach you how to make these delicious plant foods with rainbow of spices and you know rainbow of different vegetables and make it tasty and fun. So that's available to you. Okay, so let's talk a bit about exercise. So this is something that research shows that if we stay sedentary, say sitting for an extended period of time, that is also not uh, also detrimental for our health. Even though let's say you're getting your 60 minutes of exercise you know, in a day, but if, if you then are routinely sitting for two hours doing any activity, whether you're working on computer or watching TV, so that's the reason we want to get up every 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you know, maybe take a walk around your home, maybe do some stretches, you know, reaching your hands over your head, maybe doing some squats. Uh, one of the suggestions that our wellness coordinator had is just like when you're brushing your teeth, you can just bring your knees up and down, just finding different times in the day one, not to stay sedentary, not to stay sitting for too long, and just incorporating these uh, tips uh, and these uh, techniques throughout your day. Okay, so if someone is, you know, a little bit concerned that they want to practice social distancing, they're concerned about going out, I want to tell them, wear a mask, keep a safe distance from the neighbors, you know, uh, six feet, you know, a little bit more, that's perfectly fine but I want you to go out. When you go out into the sun, especially, the sun is a disinfectant. It kills off viruses and other pathogens. There was, uh, they saw outcomes in the 1918 pandemic when they ran out of hospital beds. They had some of the patients outside who were exposed to sun. And they uh, started seeing that those who are out in nature, especially exposed to sun, they had better outcomes. So really want to stress that I we want, you know, Dr. B and, I, and both of us want you to exercise. And if you want to be in a treadmill inside, that's perfectly fine. But at least for a few minutes, you know, get some vitamin D, get some sunshine, um, just be outside. There's tremendous, in addition to the disinfecting part, there's tremendous healing that occurs when we're out in nature, when we see some blue, when we see some green. And there's, you know, more resources on how exactly to exercise that are included in your packet. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this on the next part. Okay. The other thing that is really important that is we need to include in our life is stress management. And it doesn't have to be that you need to specifically add a mindfulness activity. This is just something that I have some experience with, Dr. B has experience with, and it is a wonderful way to bring uh, some, really help reduce your stress hormones, really bring some calm, some joy, just grounding you. And these things work wonderfully. And it can be something as simple as gardening or doing a jigsaw puzzle, listening to music, but especially playing music. If you used to take piano lessons and you have some books lying around, you know, just play a little bit. And just getting the mind off of social media, off of COVID-19 or 10 other things, and just focusing on one thing and being really in the present moment has amazing benefits for our health. It reduces our stress hormones. It's good for physical health, emotional health, and spiritual health. Meditation. This is something I encourage all of my patients to start and if they've already started, encourage them to increase their practice. For those of you who may be new to meditation, there are wonderful apps right now. Uh, we have ourselves used Calm, and the other one is Headspace. And all of them, and there are others, they all have, I think even Down Dog has a meditation section. 
they all have trial dates that you can try it out for a few weeks to see if this is something that works for you or something that'd be useful for you. And even if you want to purchase, they're actually fairly reasonable in pricing. And just to let you know, as part of uh, our clinic, Lifestyle Docs, we do meditation uh, every first and third Saturday at nine o'clock. If you all are interested in joining us, the information's on our website and I have your emails and I'm happy to kind of alert you next time. And we do it every month, first and third Saturdays, nine o'clock. We used to do it in the clinic and now we do it virtually through one of these Google Meet things. Yes, so thank you for pointing that out. So, right, we're not doing it in person you know, because of the current situation, but you know, we've continued doing it first and third Saturdays. Okay, another thing that sometimes people feel like, okay, meditation is something I'm not quite ready for. And this can be a prerequisite. It can be something that you do alongside meditation is breathing exercises. This is, again, does wonderful things to turn on the relaxation response, to lower the stress hormones. And these things are beneficial, again, not just for emotional health, they're better for our physical health. There's so much research showing that just taking a deep breath in few times a day, just really using all of your lungs and then slowly exhaling can do wonders. And in fact, why don't we do that right now? So everyone just kind of sit up straight, you know, kind of roll your shoulders back and just kind of settle into the chair. Or if you're standing, that's perfectly fine too. Just be here, be present right here, right now. And just kind of feel where your feet are, See where your hands are. And let's just take a real deep breath in. And slow. And exhale out. We're going to do another deep breath in. And slow. Exhale out. And this is something you can do any time of the day, if you're feeling a bit anxious or something is not going quite right, you can just take a moment to yourself and just take these long, deep breaths. Another breathing exercise I wanna to introduce to you, this is more like breath regulation. The fancy term for this is pranayama. And basically what you're trying to do is do the inhalation breathing in for a count of four, and then breathing out for a count of six. So we're purposely regulating, we're purposely lengthening the outgoing breath, the exhalation. And research shows that this pattern of breathing reduces our stress hormones. It turns on the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, which you know, turns on the relaxation response. So this is something I recommend all my patients do at least twice a day, whether in the morning, evening, before meal times, and it's very simple. And I'm gonna guide you right now. So I'm gonna count, we're gonna do it together. So breathing in, two, three, four. Breathing out, two, three, four, five, six. Breathing in, two, three, four. Breathing out, two, three, four, five, six. One more time, breathing in, two, three, four, breathing out, two, three, four, five, six. And this is something I encourage you to make a part of your daily life. It's gonna really make a difference on reducing your anxiety, stress, even other uh, emotional issues. So with that, that's our formal presentation for today. And, you know, uh, if you have a question, I'm going to look at the chat, chat box and we'll start answering there. And I, I see there are questions already. So I'm going to read it and Dr. B is going to answer. So uh, Ms. Gardner is asking, is water aerobics a good exercise and how long should I do it? And 
uh, how many days in the amount. Okay, yes, water aerobics is an excellent exercise. Um, and chlorine, um, you know, does get rid of the viruses. So being in swimming pools right now is, is okay as long as there are not too many other people. Um, water, our body really, our joints love being in the water. So people with arthritis, water aerobics is excellent for their joints. Um, and in terms of how long and how many days, um, it's whatever works for you. If you could try to do it two, three days a week, um, and however much you can do, I would do at least um, 10, 15 minutes. Um, but the longer you can do it, the more beneficial it will be. Yeah, and exercise is almost like a dose response. The mm -hmm. more you do it, the, uh, the more it is you know, good for you. But in terms of the recommended guidelines that, uh, that are part of your packet, you want to do about 150 minutes of uh, aerobic exercise. So water aerobics, whether it's you know uh, doing a regular aerobic or water aerobics, you want to get to about 150. But that doesn't mean that if you were not doing anything, that the first week you start this, you want to get to 150. So like Dr. B mentioned, when you're just starting out, this is something new to you, maybe just 10 minutes. And if you feel up to it, maybe go up to 15. And I see that Michelle actually answered it already in terms of what the guidelines are. Yes, that's perfect. Um, someone's asking about kefir. Okay, so kefir is another uh, uh, probiotic, another thing that has a lot of healthy bacteria. We just wanna make sure that the kind of kefir you get is non-dairy, because dairy especially is very inflammatory. It's something, it has larger proteins. So the dairy protein is designed for the calf. It's not designed for our human body. And also it, there's not a problem with saturated fat in kefir, but certainly animal protein, it can be a, cause a lot of inflammation. And so that's gonna kind of get our immune system busy in working on these proteins and sort of takes away the attention of, you know, fighting off viruses. So kefir is perfectly fine. Just make sure you get non-dairy kefir. Could you indicate the right masks to use? Okay, I can take this one. Sure. And so as Dr. Uh, B mentioned, that when you're wearing a mask, you're actually protecting the people around you more than you're protecting yourself. You are protecting yourself. Uh, the mask that will protect you, uh, you know, near 99% plus are the KN95 masks. These are the masks that are rated for respiratory, you know, that physicians and people on the front lines, paramedics, these are the masks they need to wear. And people often ask me if they are the best kind, why doesn't everybody wear them? Well, it's just supply. We just don't have enough of these masks to go around. So people who are most vulnerable are the ones that need the KN95. So just in terms of hierarchy, those would be the most effective for, you know, in terms of preventing the uh, infection. The next ones would be surgical masks. Okay, and then the ones after that would be uh, cloth masks. And there's wonderful innovations that people have made. And this is something we learned at one of the potlucks is this lady made cloth masks, but then she put in a filter inside it. So this is filter that you're putting in your air conditioning units. She just took that apart, took the filter out of that, that sheet and just cut it up in uh, small pieces. So if you have a mask that you're using, make sure that this filter part is not touching your skin. So there's some cloth, you know, if it has a little sleeve, you can put it in the sleeve. So you don't want that to irritate, uh, you know, your skin and mucous membranes. You want, don't want the filter to touch your screen. Oh, somebody's telling us people have also put coffee filters in the little sleeve. Yeah, that would be perfectly fine too. Anything that adds another layer of barrier is definitely going to help. But in terms of, you know, really high uh, way, you know, really KN95s are the only ones that are proven so far to really, you know, eliminate the spread. Most other masks are really protecting others from you. 
um, K9 and 95 is the only one that's also going to protect you. Um, someone's asking, I buy a probiotic juice drink at the grocery store. Is it better to switch to more fermented foods? That is an excellent question. So thank you, Ms. Miller, for asking that. And I'm going to do sort of a correlator to that. A lot of people, whether it's a probiotic drink or probiotic supplements in terms of pills, that these have become really popular. And these have some value, but they're of limited benefit. Because, you know, whether it's the drink or whether it's a probiotic supplement, you may get, you know, six, you may get seven, you may get even 10 different uh, bacterial, bacterial species. But when you do wild fermentation, you know, whether it's sauerkraut or kimchi, and you're making these things yourself, and you, actually you can buy them in the refrigerator if they haven't been pasteurized, you know, miso paste, they have hundreds of different bacterial species. And in our colon, at one time, we had over 4,000 to 5,000 different species. You know, with our Western diet over the last couple of centuries, now the average is around 1,500. Some have a little more, some have a little less. But you can just imagine if there's 1,500 different bacteria, that adding 10 more is going to be of limited benefit. And actually, if you have an infection, Sometimes these added bacteria, they can kind of take over some of the old bacteria. So it can actually even cause some harm at times. So we want to include probiotics into our diet, but we want to do it through fermentation where we get exposed to a large number of them. So hopefully that helps. Um, you know, when I was mentioning chronic diseases, I'm not sure if I remember to say high blood pressure. Um, is one that we are definitely seeing increased um, COVID-19 infections with. Mm -hmm. um, the one large study showed that um, people with high blood pressure had double the risk of death with COVID-19. Um, people with heart disease had three times the risk and people with high blood pressure and heart disease together had four times the risk. Um, so really all sorts of chronic diseases, um, we should be more careful um, if we have them. Okay, I see another uh, question in the chat box. Will the flu shot be offered this year and what are the benefits for it? So uh, great questions. The flu shot is meant to prevent or reduce the number of uh, flu infections, influenza infections. So even though this past winter, you know, I think what is, over 100,000 deaths have been attributed to the uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, there have been up to almost 40,000 deaths from the flu. So each year, you know, depending on how bad the flu season is, there are tens of thousands of people who die from the flu. And again, getting the flu shot reduces your risk by 40 to 60%. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is something that is helpful. So it is, that's not going to protect you from COVID-19 but it is going to give you some benefit in preventing getting the flu. So, you know, the current recommendations are to still get the flu vaccine. Yes, absolutely. And, and flu vaccine is something sometimes Dr. M and I disagree on. Um, but this season, I do plan on encouraging patients to get it. Just again, not to overwhelm the medical system with a bad flu season and COVID-19 and to, you know, uh, hard viruses going on in the community. So hopefully it will be a season with a good match um, and we can reduce um, at least the flu deaths this winter. Okay, another person asked just different types of probiotics. So I'm gonna see if I can remember them all. Okay, there's miso paste. Uh, there is, uh, you kimchi, can- Kimchi, sauerkraut. Sprout. Uh, apple cider vinegar if it's unfiltered and raw. And the best one that we've been able to find is Bragg's. And that's really good quality and that still has the actual bacteria that they use for the fermentation. Uh, certain types of kefir, if they are non-dairy, would be just fine. You want uh, things, you want to pick up, I mean, even non-dairy yogurt is good, but you wanna pick up packages 
which don't list the bacteria that they have in them. Like when you do non-dairy yogurt, it lists the six strains that are there. But if you pick up a jar of sauerkraut, it doesn't tell you what bacteria are in there because there's literally hundreds in there. So those would be the preferred ones to get. And if you can make your own sauerkraut, make your own kimchi, it's really simple to do. I actually used to make it. I've just been lazy and haven't made it in a while, but it's actually pretty easy to make. We're getting close to noon, but this is something I was hoping that if we have time, we can do and only the ones who want to do it um, can do it. But sometimes it helps to make changes if we have a community. And right now we have this wonderful tribe of people who are doing this immune boosting boot camp. So perhaps we can pick one thing that we want to try to do this week and then come report on it next week. So for instance, I can start us off. Um, even though we are of Indian origin, my kids tell me that I don't use spices. <laughs> so what I'm going to try to do this week is to increase spices in the foods that I cook. Um, because like Dr. M said, we don't pay enough attention to herbs and spices because they don't have any macronutrients. They don't have any carbohydrates. They don't have any protein. They don't have any fat. So we, we just, we don't think they are an important food. But it turns out they are super important because they have these phytonutrients that really boost our immune system and they have these anti-aging properties, antioxidant properties. So I'm going to increase spices this week and report back to you guys. Please feel free to um, tell us, and it doesn't have to be food, it can be exercise, it can be stress management, whatever one thing you'd like to definitely, and we want you to do more than one thing, but share one thing with us. Yeah, so Please feel free to unmute yourself. And if you feel comfortable, just share with us what change or what thing you would like to do over the next week. And then we can kind of revisit this uh, next time. Um, I'm going to increase my uh, time that I spend on meditation and get uh, more comfortable with that. Wonderful. That's an excellent, excellent idea. Thank you for sharing, Patty. I think what I'm going to do is to um, to add the fermented foods to, to the diet. I think that's something that I haven't done, and I, I really believe it's it will be a good challenge for this week. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I, this is Word again. I have a question kind of shared, too. Um, the other Dr. M. Montgomery talks about... Uh, doing those apple cider vinegar shots. Mm -hmm. So is that something you recommend to get that probiotic from the apple, you know, like a tablespoon and eight ounce of glass of water? Yeah. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. One, I want to make sure that, uh, that people don't do the apple cider vinegar just plain. Right. It's very concentrated. It right. can right. be harmful to the enamel of the tooth. It can even cause injury to the esophagus. So uh, at the minimum, dilute it with some water. And that's something that can work very well. A lot of people have trouble sort of drinking that. So I tell them it's not something you have to kind of force yourself to drink. Just make it part of your salad dressing. So this is what we do, you know, no matter what salad dressing, and most of the times we're making it ourselves anyway, we just put in some apple cider vinegar. And that way you're getting the apple cider vinegar, the probiotics, with the prebiotics, which is the healthy fiber that's in the salad. So the two of them together make a wonderful combination, wonderful synergy. So you're exactly right, Bernadette. You can drink it in a glass of water, make sure it's diluted, but it really doesn't matter how you get it into you. But you know, if you're gonna do it like that, just dilute it. You know, okay, that's my thing for the week. Oh, that's your thing for the week? Okay, cool. Yeah, so, perfect, thank you. And yes, I do want to say if there's other questions, feel free to unmute and ask us those and also share what you might want to change. Um, so in chat, Rosalba said, where can I buy amla powder? Um, we get it from Amazon. If you put in organic amla powder, a couple of uh, brands will come up. And garam masala, we get that from Indian store, but I bet Amazon has that too. They seem to have everything. Actually, Whole Foods has it too. I looked last time at Whole Foods and at HEB uh, Central Market. Both of them have garam masala. 
And garam masala is a very common Indian spice for those of you who are wondering. And amla powder is uh, Indian gooseberry powder and it, it's very strong antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. I do add it to my green smoothie every morning. Um, Alicia said, I'm going to drink more shakes and try water exercise. Okay, adding the exercise, excellent, great. All right, I mean, uh, we wanna be respectful of your time. If anyone needs to leave, please feel free to. We're just gonna hang around a few more minutes in case anyone has any questions, uh, you know, has any other comments or something they felt like. And also give us some feedback. We're gonna go a little bit deeper into the nutrition, talk a little bit more about exercise, really try to make this, you know, each presentation kind of builds on the next one. But if there's a particular topic or something you wanna make sure we cover, let us know. Allison said, I'm going to stand up throughout the day. Yay. Michelle said, I'm going to create a timer to remind me to get up and do some squats throughout the day. I'm so proud of everyone. Yeah. Um, I see Carolina is working in the kitchen, getting ready for the cooking class. Carolina, would you like to say hello and tell us what your cooking class is going to be about? Hi, so, too fast, this is the salad, and uh, I don't know, can you see it? Yeah. So, it's a mixture of onion, corn, zucchini, um, red cabbage, celery, tomatoes, cucumbers, and uh, cilantro, and you can add more, and uh, the other fast dish is the sweet potatoes and black-eyed peas with a sprinkle of smoke, uh, liquid smoke. And then I'm doing a more elaborate dish, which is um, mint biryani. So I'm preparing the mushrooms for it and there's a new star masala in that dish. Okay, awesome. 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 And again, we want to thank Carolina for providing this uh, complimentary class to all of the uh, everyone here at the immune boosting camp and actually she had made it free for other folks also. So if you have friends and family who would like to join in for the one o'clock cooking class, please feel free to share the link. Uh, does everybody have, it's gonna be a different link. Carolina's gonna use her Zoom account so the audio is, you know, better yes yeah. audio and the video is very good i know right now we couldn't he hear carolina as well but when she sets up with two cameras it's perfect yeah so she's and that's one. It's, uh, mango ice cream oh well i'll have to come to the class for that <laughs> we may even drive by for that one <laughs> <laughs> Someone is asking if cheese is bad. Okay, so again, you know, food I want you to think of as a package. Every food is gonna give us some nourishment, some vitamins. What we wanna do is have it be maximally healthy for us and really be minimally anything that it uh, compromises our health. So cheese, you know, will give you some calcium, will give you some calories, will give you some protein. But since it's a package, it comes with lots of saturated fat. And it's a very calorie dense meal. One pound of cheese is 1700 calories a pound, whereas one pound of green leafy vegetables are 100 calories a pound. And with our current, you know, obesity epidemic, over 80% of us are either overweight or obese. So we consider it not part of a healthy diet because you can get the calcium from leafy greens and you get so much more. You get fiber, you get phytonutrients, you get you know, just water, just nourishment. So uh, there's a lot healthier ways to get the calcium and protein than what's available in cheese. And Carolina just put in the Zoom link to the cooking class. So feel free to copy and that too. Um, yeah, so it's, the Zoom link is in the chat box and it's also in the email that I sent you reminding you of this immune boosting session. 
So, but if you have any trouble, just I'm going to keep an eye on my email and just email me. And if you can copy from the chat box, obviously that's going to work too. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the course. And I want you guys to know that feel free to reach out to us. You don't have to wait till next week if you have a question or a concern. We're here for you guys these three weeks and beyond. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can email us, um, send us a message through Facebook, Instagram, our website, however you want to get in touch.